Hi everyone, it's Rebecca M. Holtz with the Mount Pleasant Chamber of Commerce. I want to welcome you to today's The Pivot, Living and Working During COVID-19. I'm so glad that you can join us today either live or on a recording. You can always find The Pivot on our YouTube channel and our Mount Pleasant Chamber of Commerce website. I want to welcome now our moderator for today, John Carroll. John is president of Unlimited Performance. John is an expert in helping people, teams, and organizations be more productive, more profitable, and have more fun. Always a good thing. John serves on many low country boards, and uh, he's a mentor to really all of us here at the Chamber. John serves on the executive board for the Mount Pleasant Chamber of Commerce. Good afternoon, John. Hello, Rebecca. Uh, thank you so much for the kind words and the introduction. Um, you know, we've talked through the through the weeks and months now, Rebecca, about how uh, this is nothing like we would have expected for the Chamber's year, and yet um, we've been able to uh, not only maintain but add value to our, our members in such a crazy time as this one. So it's been a pleasure working so closely with you in this and to uh, have everyone give us their perspective on this extraordinary time. So I thank you and I thank everyone and welcome you to The Pivot, a, well, a weekly series of informational discussions on our local, regional and national issues in the midst of and following the current pandemic. This event is pre presented exclusively by the Mount Pleasant Chamber of Commerce. My role as moderator is to introduce our guest, get the discussion started with some questions and give those attending the event live the opportunity to participate by using the chat or Q&A functions which Rebecca will be monitoring. Thank you for taking the time with your Mount Pleasant Chamber of Commerce to join fellow members and staying informed to help you care for your team, your clients and customers, and take care of business in post-pandemic conditions. You may recall in pre-pandemic days, the ability to attract hundreds or even thousands into an event was considered to be a key strength of, of organizations. With current restrictions that include physical distancing and limits on how many can gather in one place have caused postponement and or cancellation of everything from conferences and conventions to worship and college football. With the Mount Pleasant Chamber facing its 10th anniversary of its popular business and community expo, the decision came down to how the chamber could offer the same or greater value to sponsors, exhibitors, and guests without the crowds gathering in traditional ex exhibition hall style. Our guest on this edition of The Pivot will talk about how the Chamber has pivoted on this event, as well as bring a sponsor's perspective to the discussion. Our guest for today is well known in these circles. He is Shane Griffin. Shane is a senior marketing consultant at iHeartMedia in Charleston, where he helps business, businesses build revenue and brand awareness with targeted radio and digital marketing ad, uh, campaigns. In addition, Shane is also the public address announcer for the South Carolina Stingrays hockey team, the South Carolina, uh, oh, the Citadel football team, forgive me. And um, Shane's uh, got a great background. He spent most of his professional career in, in the radio industry, emulating his father, Gary Griffin, who enjoyed a 40 year career in Charleston radio on 1035 The Weasel locally. Over his own 30 year career, Shane has been a radio DJ, a sports talk show host, a baseball play by play announcer, and a financial talk show host. In 2005, Shane first joined what was then the Mount Pleasant Business and Professional Association. Since joining the Mount Pleasant Chamber of Commerce in 05, he has served on the Expo Committee, held the marketing chair, membership chair, and president-elect positions. Shane married his college sweetheart, Andrea, and they live, and, and I probably didn't pronounce that correctly, Shane, and they live happily ever after with their two chihuahuas, Mr. Ears and Molly. Well, Shane, we have, welcome. We have a new addition. We now have uh, Paisley. We picked up a third dog uh, about three weeks ago. She's a minpin, so yeah, Mr. Ears, Molly, and Paisley. So we're all jammed in and uh, loving life. <laughs> oh my goodness, that's great. And Shane, I want to make sure I welcome you back to the pivot because you were on our uh, inaugural edition 
uh, back when we were calling it the sales pivot, we've even had to pivot the title of the, of the event. Um, and and it's, been a, it's been a crazy time, right? But as president of the Mount Pleasant Chamber of Commerce, you've had the opportunity to lead the chamber through some challenging times to say the least. Now with the chamber's most visible event of the year, the Business and Community Expo upon us, we had a choice to postpone and pause, cancel it all together, or consider a third option. Talk about the decision-making journey, if you will. Well, first of all, thanks, John, for all you're doing. Uh, this is a, a wonderful opportunity for, for members to kind of get uh, some insight to see what other members are doing and pivoting in this, uh, this COVID era that we do live in. And I thoroughly enjoy uh, the pivot each and every week. So thank you, John, for your service to the chamber, uh, former president, one of the longest serving uh, members of the organization and, and, and a great friend. So this is a, a joy for me to be able to have a conversation with you uh, today. You know, when we got started in 2020, it was going to be a banner year. Um, it's still a good year and has been a, a fairly good year considering the circumstances. But when we started out, we were on a trajectory for the expo that was just incredible. Michael Cochran and his committee uh, were really putting some things in place that were exciting and fresh and new. And then uh, mid-March came and all of that kind of changed. So we had to obviously pivot from the way that we normally do things into either not doing it the way we used to, not doing it at all, or coming up with some sort of a uh, virtual option. So we kind of bided our time. You know, we had multiple meetings and discussions amongst the committee itself and then amongst the board as well. And as uh, we navigated our way through COVID and we, we saw that our members wanted more virtual events and still wanted to be connected, we felt like this might be an opportunity to do some sort of a virtual expo. And we've kind of talked about adding a virtual element to the real expo. And now this, uh, you know, Brian Sherman has said it well uh, in many board meetings, this is a, a practice run for what the future may look like for the virtual part of our Mount Pleasant Business and Community Expo. So, you know, for us, it was a, a lot of planning, a lot of back and forth. And I've said many times in this era of canceled events, uh, let's roll the dice and see what happens because uh, we've got sponsors that support us. Uh, a big thank you to Ken French and, and the team over at uh, Cruise Subaru, where you've got a friend in the car business. Uh, we appreciate Cruise and, and their great support of our event over the many years that they've been a partner, <coughs> excuse me, of ours. Also, a thanks to the town of Mount Pleasant. We couldn't do a lot of the things that we do without the town support. Also, a thanks to On Purpose Adventures. Ben Toy has uh, stepped in and really helped us gamify this year's expo and put this thing on a mobile platform and really turn it into something that I could have never imagined seven or eight months ago. And then also too, uh, the radio station that I work for, one of the four that I work for, News Radio 94.3 WSC, obviously sees the, the value in being connected with the Mount Pleasant Chamber and being in front of a number of business owners because a large percentage of the listeners to that radio station are business owners and professionals, a very affluent listenership. So we thank our sponsors for their support. And over the course of time, we had these discussions. What should we do? We finally uh, got a vote from the committee. They wanted to move forward. They felt confident they could move forward. We brought it to the board and we voted unanimously to move forward with the virtual expo. And uh, here we are six days away from the launch of our first virtual expo and we couldn't be more excited. And again, I gotta say kudos to Michael Cochran, his committee, Ben Toy, everybody involved at Expo, and also to Mike Compton from marketing, and Amanda Bunting Coleman, who does our social media. Thanks to Rebecca and Tamara behind the scenes helping us. I mean, it's been a team effort, and uh, I'm excited to see uh, when we launch on Monday what that 10 days of Expo is going to be. Thanks, Shane, and um, great perspective. Uh, thanks for the uh, the overview, if you will, from the president's seat. Um, of how this year has gone uh, with the chamber. So the Business and Community Expo has gone virtual. Talk about how that represents equal, if not greater value for sponsors, such as iHeartMedia, as well as exhibitors who will be taking part. Well, as in years past, uh, attendance is free. We're not charging uh, you to attend this virtual expo. So it's very simple. You'll just visit mountpleasantexpo.com and you register to attend the expo that way 
uh, you will then download an app and then you walk through uh, the app and you can see the virtual booths. We call it walking the floor like we did when we were able to uh, attend events in person. But you'll be able to see all of the vendors there on the expo quote unquote virtual floor. And you can just simply click which vendor you want to, uh, more information about or to speak to. And then there's a whole other level that goes on uh, from there. I went actually through a demo of the uh, expo today, and it's very simple to maneuver, very simple to uh, move about. You know, the, again, a gamified part of it. So there's opportunities to win a lot of prizes. We have over a thousand dollars in giveaways. So we're excited about the the value that we're bringing. It's exciting. It's different, and it's an opportunity to not only be boxed into a physical building and not only to be boxed into a physical time. So this is a 10 day expo, 24 hours a day. So if you've got um, a booth at this virtual expo and someone wants more information about your booth, they could come see you, uh, you know, on day four at two o'clock in the morning. The, 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 the possibilities and the opportunities are endless. So you're not um, constrained by the physical walls or uh, time. And we just felt that that was a huge value to, to vendors because it gave them an opportunity to attach to folks and to connect to people uh, at any given time. There's a live chat opportunity in there as well. So um, there's just all kinds of neat things that we're doing with this thing. And again, it's, a, it's our first time. We're gonna learn, we're gonna make some mistakes. Uh, we're gonna learn some valuable lessons, but we wanted to try it and wanted to do it because the members they continue to tell us, keep doing the webinars. We love this kind of stuff. And we felt like we could not do a, uh, an expo in our 10th year. We just couldn't, we couldn't say no. Yeah, that's fair enough, Shane. And I think it's, it's consistent with who the chamber has been this year, isn't it? Because um, I, I, I sense through all of it, from my perspective, that the chamber has been about, we will, one way or another, we will continue to add value to our membership. And to the community where we live, work, play, and worship. Oh, absolutely. And as you well know, John, we're in the midst of the race to 500. So um, when we started this year, I put, a, I put a goal out there to the membership team that we wanted to hit 500 members by the end of 2020. And that's saying a lot because when I took over as membership chair, oh gosh, I guess that was 2016 or 2017, one of those two years that they, they all run together at some point. But uh, anyway, when I got into the membership chair, we were at 175 members. And so, you know, we've really come a long way and we're still 99.95% uh, volunteer. You know, Rebecca and Tamara are our only two paid employees. Uh, everybody else does it because they love the organization. Uh, not to say that Rebecca and Tamara don't love the organization, of course <laughs> they do, but they're getting some coin for doing that uh, as well. Um, but uh, we give of our time, we give of our talents, and this is an organization that's very near and dear to my heart. So, you know, we're in the midst of the race to 500. We want to give as much value as possible to attract as many new members, hold as many current members as we have, and then offer up opportunities like the Expo to say, listen, yes, we are an all-volunteer organization, and uh, we may not be a, a big monstrosity of a chamber, but you know what? We are what we are, and we're going to be the very best that we can be uh, and do things that uh, others may not want to try to do. We're fairly nimble and fairly quick, and we can uh, put together things that um, others might not be able to. That's a good point, and you know, Agile is, is even more valuable, I think, than it was before the pandemic uh, arrived. Um, Shane, talk a little bit more. Um, you you mentioned that the uh, that attending, not 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 exhibiting, but attending the the expo um, is fairly straightforward and and easy to do. Not something that you have to go get an advanced degree for. But um, you also use the term gamify. Talk a little bit more about that, if you will. It sounds like fun to me. It really is. And this goes back to what we did last year. And again, uh, kudos to Ben Toy, um, my good friend from On Purpose Adventures. Uh, he has been just wonderful to work with. And last year, if, if for those that are, that are watching this either live or recorded at a later time, you'll remember that uh, we did a scavenger hunt, a virtual scavenger hunt uh, through On Purpose Adventures with Ben Toy. And there was an opportunity to win prizes by visiting a number of booths and answering some questions and things like that. So really, I guess, John, if you think about it, the virtual expo part kind of started last year somewhat with that. 
Right. But he wanted to kind of take that to another level. And it's very similar to that. So as you, again, it's free to attend. All you need to do is visit mountpleasantexpo.com to register. You'll be directed on which app to download, how to download it. It's a mobile, mobile app, of course. Uh, and once you have that app downloaded, then to progress through to booths and things like that, you'll be answering a series of questions, you know, uh, either about the chamber or about crews or about other businesses. And as you correctly answer those questions and visit these booths, you're in the running for, um, you know, over a thousand dollars in giveaways that were, uh, that were going to be given away to attendees. So it really makes it fun. And it's not just a click here and watch a video and a click here and watch a video. It is an interactive way to engage with not only uh, the vendors that are vending, but for the vendors, it's a way to, you know, have a chat and a, a conversation at any time in the next 10 days, starting on the 21st uh, with folks that have an interest in their business. Sounds fantastic. And, you know, um, and I, I, don't, I don't think we can emphasize enough the fact that we've got choices of days and nights and weekends and evenings, primarily because if somebody had a conflict, if somebody had something going on on the afternoon of the expo, that pretty much would take them out from being able just to attend. You're absolutely right, John. And again, with 10 days, 24 hours a day, um, you can visit the expo at your leisure. And the beautiful part is you don't, you can't, you don't have to come just once. So you can come into the expo, check out a couple of booths. If you got to run to an appointment or go somewhere else, you can exit the expo and then come right back in. There is again, no fee to attend. Uh, it's absolutely free. You can visit as many times uh, as you want. So we've made it as simple as possible for vendors and consumers to connect to each other. It's just a matter of now getting the word out and getting folks to visit mountpleasantexpo.com to register, download the app, and, and off we'll roll on Monday. Shane, um, I, I don't know if you have any of the statistics. Do you happen to know offhand how many exhibitors we have, how many vendors we have? Yes, we've got 25 confirmed uh, vendors. And so these folks have obviously paid for the space, the virtual space. They've also uh, worked with Ben Toy and Michael and the committee, uh, putting all of the elements together to build their virtual booth. So we're looking at 25 uh, booths. Now on a, on a real world expo, we're pushing, you know, 94, 96 booths. And we were well on our way uh, to that number. But for a virtual expo, our first time, uh, putting this together as a group of volunteers, you know, I'm very pleased with uh, with 25 vendors, and I'm very pleased with four sponsors. Um, and we've got our our presenting sponsor, Crew Subaru. They saw so much value in this virtual expo that they came back at the same spin level that they invested last year at the real expo. So that should show you right there the power of of this event and how excited we are about it. And without our sponsors, Crews. Town of Mount Pleasant, News Radio 94.3 WSC and On Purpose Adventures, and also our vendors. Uh, there's no way we could pull this thing off. We're not gonna, we're not gonna get rich doing this. This is not the the reason we're doing it. No. We never put on an expo to get rich. We put on an expo to connect our members with other members and to continue to solidify relationships. That's what it's all about. It's about building and connecting businesses east of the Cooper in the expo, either virtual or in person just does a fantastic job of doing that. And, you know, Shane, you make a good point, and I guess it, it, it might get overlooked from time to time, but the community, the town really embraces this expo and, and uh, business week for the town of Mount Pleasant each year. I imagine that's coming up as well. Yeah, actually this year, John, is um, September is, is business appreciation month. So I was lucky enough and honored enough to accept the mayor's proclamation at the very interesting town hall uh, council meeting uh, last Tuesday, but I was able to get in before public comment and, and get the proclamation from the mayor and uh, was able to thank the mayor and the council and Mr. Eric DeMora for their support of what we're doing here at the Mount Pleasant uh, Chamber of Commerce. But you're right, the town has been great. Uh, of course, you know, uh, every Monday I have an opportunity to sit down with uh, Mayor Will Haney and Lauren Sims, Monday with the mayor, and we have an opportunity to talk about what's happening in the town, not only COVID uh, matters, but also business matters and how it affects uh, our membership. So, yeah, we're grateful to the town for their commitment and their um, connectivity to us. And, you know, I, I got to tell you, our, 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 business, our businesses, our consumers, uh, our members, 
they're very excited about the direction that we're going. I hear great things by email, phone call, folks I talk to, you know, how are you guys getting this done? How are you doing this? And how are you doing that? And, you know, we're so excited to be a part of this organization. And, you know, that's, that, that shows the uh, intensity and that shows um, just where people are in their minds and their hearts when it comes to this organization. I mean, as you can probably tell, I'm very passionate about this group. Uh, I first joined in 2005 and was lucky enough to, uh, you know, be elected uh, president uh, for 2019 and 2020. And it's been a, just a joy. It's been an absolute joy to be a part of this organization. And I'll continue on. Uh, I've got some uh, ideas and some things uh, I want to do to serve the organization moving forward after my term is up at the end of this year. But uh, I, I, wouldn't take, I wouldn't take another group over this one. No way. Fantastic. And, and Shane, I, I mean, we, we owe you a great debt of gratitude, not only for what would have been a normal couple of years of service in the president's role, um, which really crunches in on your day job for those who don't know. Um, there are an awful lot of hours and, and blood, sweat and tears to go into it. But I think, and you've already started to answer this question, it, it appears from everything you're doing that the chamber should double your salary as president and, and add combat pay to your compensation plan. Uh, we joke about that, of course, because it's a volunteer position. But there's been so much to do in leadership and yet the chamber seems to be growing despite lockdowns, interruptions, and concerns about spikes in the, in the COVID-19 numbers, how can that be happening? Well, I gotta say it's a great team. Um, you know, I will tell you from a personal standpoint, if I could be candid for a moment, I've really grown as a person over the last two years uh, in being in a position like this. Um, I had a, a conversation with a board member near the beginning of my term uh, last year and this particular board member said, you know, Shane, you be you. You're leading a group of leaders. You be you, and this organization will be going in the right direction. And so I've always kind of kept that close to my heart because uh, it's not about me. It's about us, and it's about our team and how well this team works like a well-oiled machine. Um, it, it's incredible to me that how much time people put into the marketing and the expo and even a, uh, a program like this, John, you've put time in to, to ensure that we are on time and on track and having a great conversation. There's, there's really no stone left unturned when it comes to planning out what our next steps are. And that's because I've got a great board and a great team. And we'll continue to make tough decisions. We'll continue to make exciting uh, decisions. But I can't wait to see what the future holds for this organization because it's such a great core of people at the center. And we're bringing in new people that are wanting to be involved too. And we welcome that. We welcome anybody and everybody that wants to be not only a member, but a sponsor. And heck, even a committee chair, a committee, uh, committee member, and eventually into a board member. We're looking for new leaders. So if you have uh, something in your, in your heart and something on your mind about being in a position of leadership, you know, reach out to me directly and we'd love to uh, connect you to the right people and, and get you rolling from there. I don't know if I really answered the question, John. I was kind of rambling there. For a minute, but, uh, um, you know what, Shane? I tee it up and you, you knock it out. That's, uh, I guess it goes back to teamwork. You know, we're, we're doing a lot of great things. Uh, I think we've added almost 40 new members uh, since the pandemic has started. And that is just, uh, to me, you know, phenomenal. And if we're able to hit 500 new members by early next year, given what we've gone through um, in this market, in this country, in this world, you know, I, I would be very pleased with that. And I know the team would be too. Yes, indeed. Um, you know, Shane, I, and I think just to reinforce what you were saying about uh, inviting people to become more involved, whether they're existing chamber members or they're looking at, at chamber membership, um, I think you and I know from experience that we derive the greatest value uh, when we are more involved, when we do get engaged, when we, when we accept uh, leadership roles and, and um, you know, roll up our sleeves and do things for the good of the order. Um, and I think that's been, that's been illustrated time and time again. I think our board members would say that to a person. Um, and, and, you know, I guess we're doing a little bit of uh, rah rah for the chamber, but we are not your, we are not your typical chamber of commerce. 
Um, talk about, if you will, and this may be a little bit off the beaten path, but talk about what we've heard from other chamber executives. There's one thing in particular I think that we both notice is, is amazing about that. Yeah, so a couple of, a couple of interesting uh, answers to that question, John, if, if you'll allow me. First of all, um, to your first part of your question, I love to connect people. And, you know, I have a saying that I've got a person for that. If you have a problem and if you need somebody, there's a pretty good chance I can help you. Um, and I'm not patting myself on the back, but I, felt, I feel like I've done a, a really good job of not only through the chamber, but also through um, my position at iHeartMedia to know a lot of people and to be able to connect people. And I mean, I get texts and emails uh, and phone calls. Hey, I'm looking for this. Do you, I mean, yep, I got somebody for that. And so, you know, I love to connect people and, 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 and with, with no feeling of give me something in return. It's like, how can I help you connect to this person and help you be more successful? So I, I love, I love um, doing that. The second part, as far as how we're doing it, um, I, I think, and you brought this up a moment ago, we uh, just recently made the switch over to Chamber Master, which is our, <clears throat> excuse me, Chamber Master is our new CRM. And that was a process that took us a few months to kind of make a decision on which direction we were going to go when it comes to a CRM, because the one we had was just not <clears throat> functioning the way that we uh, had hoped and was not able to kind of handle the capacity that we were working under. So we were talking with Chamber Master. I was on the phone with the gentleman there and we were talking um, about the platform and it was in the early sales process. And he said, well, tell me a little bit more about the organization. I said, well, you know, this, we've been, in, we've been going since this and it's this. And well, how many members do you have? I said, well, right now we're at about, you know, almost 400, something like that. And he said, uh, you're at 400 members? I said, yes, sir. He goes, and you said earlier, you're a volunteer organization. I said, yeah. Is, is that bad? Is that a problem? You know, what's, what's the deal? He says, well, I've worked with chambers all over the country and I've worked with chambers for many years. And typically at member 75 is where you see a chief executive officer step in a paid position. I've never heard of a chamber that's had over 75 members and be all volunteer. And he, he, he paused and he goes, how are you, how are you guys doing this? So it was interesting to get his perspective, a person that, has talked to a lot of chambers over the years that he was blown away by what we were doing. And again, I think it goes back to the strength of the team because uh, we've got a great core and we're out, uh, we're out preaching the gospel of the Mount Pleasant Chamber of Commerce. And, and thanks, Shane. And, and the expo really is one evidence of that. And so with that note, I want to bring uh, Rebecca back into the uh, conversation. And Rebecca, um, you, you have a great perspective. Um, you served on the board before you stepped across to this, to your current paid role. Um, you weren't expecting, however, to be the in-house Zoom expert necessarily. But um, relative to the expo, uh, Rebecca, you've, you've seen the expos go through the years. What questions are we either getting from our live uh, attendees or what question would you add to Shane that we haven't talked about yet? So you might be able to better answer this, Shane, when we're through with the virtual expo, yet I'm getting so many positive comments, excitement about a virtual expo. The fact that um, under your leadership and with the expo committee chair that the chamber was willing to try this. And um, I think, again, that speaks to the environment that we operate under, which is uh, primarily volunteers, but who are passionate about the Mount Pleasant Chamber of Commerce. So is your vision in the future with the Expo, I'm, obviously we can't wait to get back and be together in person again, but you touched on it a little bit that if, you're, if you set aside a day to go to in-person Expo, but as we all know, work days can go haywire and you go, shoot, I, I can't go. I don't have time. This came up. Do you think there'll be a virtual component of future Mount Pleasant business and community expos going forward? That'll be sort of a, a hybrid, which we hear a lot these days with schools starting up, but a hybrid of virtual and in-person. 
Oh, I do. Thanks for the question, Rebecca. I certainly do. Uh, and with the folks that we have on the team right now to, to help give us some ideas on how to actually um, execute that, Ben Toy being one, and then obviously Michael and his committee with their ideas. I mean, that's a very vibrant committee when they meet. They're throwing ideas out, you know, and, and it's, uh, it's an exciting uh, committee call to sit in on because they're all so excited and they're all volunteers and they just love you know, I love what they do and they want to put on a great event. So, you know, whether that looks like um, setting up a camera at the live expo and letting folks kind of dial in and see what's going on um, that way, or, you know, having some element of what we're doing this year in, in, in the future alongside, um, you know, the in-person, because nothing replaces the personal handshake or the bump now or the elbow uh, nothing replaces that face-to-face -face, uh, body language. Let me read your face. Uh, you know, let me connect to you in a personal uh, matter. Then, then, you know, the, the virtual expo. It's we're excited about it, but it, it, it's never going to replace what we do at the Omar. I mean, in my opinion. Now, other presidents may think differently, but uh, if it were up to me today, I would I would say it has to be some sort of a hybrid uh, ride along. Absolutely. Because I I miss the food part. That is what I will miss the most. <laughs> trust me, trust me. Fat, fat shame misses the food, the food too. So don't worry about that. And I also am uh, disappointed that I'm not going to be able to ride the Regions bike up and down the aisles this year at the expo. So for those that uh, visit uh, every year, um, I grab the microphone. Imagine that, me with the microphone. Uh, I get on the bicycle and I ride up and down the aisles on the Regions bike, and uh, I've had some fun with that. I've had a couple of close calls, but I've uh, been able to pull that off. But uh, but yeah. The food and uh, and then playing music in the happy hour for me is always fun. I love to entertain people that way. So it is a little sad that we're not together in person, but uh, again, the virtual expo, we're excited about that opportunity. We are already kind of off topic here. We're already talking as a board about what an in-person event may look like sometime in Q4. So I don't have a lot of details on that, but we are starting those discussions. We want to get back in person. We really do, but we also want to do it smartly and safely and make sure that everybody is, uh, is everybody is safe. Yeah, we do have, Shane, we, we should clarify, we have a safety first policy, despite the fact that we cut you loose on that Regions bike in the, uh, on the <laughs> ex exhibitor floor at the Omar. Um, and so we, you know, we, we didn't come right out and say it, but you have acted as the, uh, as the MC for the expo for, you know, uh, I think for as long as it's been going, or at, at least as long as we've decided we need to have an MC. And um, so I'm, I'm gonna miss that. I'm guessing that's not gonna be part of the virtual piece. Um, and we, we're not gonna be able to pet puppies. Um, that's right. You know, another big deal. We won't smell the popcorn that um, Alexis likes to make and make sure that we have popcorn at, at the, um, at her booth and uh in the, anyway. ice, cream. In the ice cream from uh, service master we don't have the ice cream from, from service, service master. master that's exactly right that, yep. that falls under the food but that's more snacking isn't it rebecca yeah. um so uh i say all of that with with great anticipation for uh what we have in store and and again the value for the exhibitors who have taken the plunge with us if you will and decided that this is worth a, a shot because we know in times like these that more marketing rather than less is, is really the, the smart play from a business standpoint. Well, yes, and I've got a study I can send uh, if you're watching this live or recorded. I've got a study uh, that shows that advertising in either recessions or uh, uh, times of stress in society when we come out of those times of stress and or recessions and depressions, the, the brands that have continued to build their brand and what I like to call mind share uh, just accelerates once we come out and people have money to spend. So if you'd like to see that report, I'd be happy to send it to you. But, um, but yeah, I, I, um, I lost my train of thought, John, you were asking me a great question and I wanted to, I wanted to get to that. I wanted to get that study out real quick. Uh, what was your question? I'm sorry, John. <laughs> just, just, the, <laughs> just the fact that the uh, that the businesses that are that are really on point are taking the time to make sure their message is out there. 
Yes, and I've got it now. Thank you. You reminded me. Um, I've got a saying that I use with my clients too and my prospects is that, uh, you know, advertising, there can be bad advertising, but if you've got good creative and good copy and are targeting the right people, the odds are the advertising is going to be good and it's going to work. So this is the same case. Uh, we're never going to put our sponsors and our vendors in a position that their brands are going to be tarnished. It's a brand safe environment. So they can uh, feel secure in the fact that, um, you know, they're going to be seen by consumers in a very good light. And that's, uh, that's worth a lot in itself right there to be sure that they're associated with a brand that's safe. And, and I'm going to just jump to Rebecca for one more second. Rebecca, you, you've sat in on the, the, this entire process for the expo. Um, what perspective do you have for what the chamber has been able to do as we, uh, as we come up on the, uh, the opening of the 10th annual event? What we've been able to do is continue to be engaged with each other and the community. And what I'm really excited about this virtual experience is that yes, we've done so many Zoom webinars and meetings as a chamber, as have all the other organizations in the world right now staying connected. So, I mean, those are good. Meetings are good. We can talk with each other and, and webinars. You know, we, we certainly worked very hard uh, based on what our members have wanted information about to get information to them in real time to help them through this pandemic. What I think is really unique about this virtual expo is that it's going to be an interactive experience. So it's a game. And um, with the expo committee putting this together, like Shana mentioned, their um, expertise and their enthusiasm, it's gonna be a really fun time. So you need to sign up to be an attendee for the expo. It's free. You have a chance to win uh, over a thousand dollars in prizes and uh, services out there. So all you have to do is go to mountpleasantexpo.com. That simple, but that's what I'm really uh, looking forward to for that 10 day event is the interactive experience of it, which I think is really unique. Thanks Rebecca and uh, Shane, thank you for your perspective. Shane, how about a final thought and where someone can find you and contact you? Well, sure. Thanks, John. Well, for those that don't know, I'm with iHeartMedia uh, here in Charleston, South Carolina. So I've uh, been in the radio business over 30 years. I've been selling radio for 23 years. So if you have um, a need or a desire to talk about what a radio campaign might look like on one of my four stations, or if you uh, are looking to expand and scale out to other markets, I can um, help you with those uh, markets as well, uh, where I have uh, iHeartMedia stations be happy to have a discussion. I uh, also have a full suite of digital products that we can layer in along with the radio uh, advertising. So you can check me out. Uh, you can just send me an email directly, shane at mountpleasantchamber.org, shane at mountpleasantchamber.org. And you can also visit our website. The, the News Talker 94.3 WSC is one of the presenting sponsors. Uh, it's 94.3 WSC.com. Uh, that's the, uh, the, the, the best way to check out the content of the radio station and also just listen to it. You can listen to it on the traditional radio and you can also check it out on the iHeartRadio app. Just uh, search 94.3 WSC and uh, you'll find it there. But John, I appreciate the opportunity to speak to you today. And for those that are watching either live or recorded, you know, again, if you want to learn more about who we are and what we do, visit our website, mountpleasantchamber.org, mountpleasantchamber.org. And we would love to have you come in as a, a member, a sponsor, a vendor, uh, just come check us out, see what you think. And uh, we, we'd love to have you. And, and uh, we're always looking to, to add to the team, both in the uh, leadership, but also to, to the member role. So we'd love to see you either in person or virtual soon. Thank you, Shane Griffin, Senior Marketing Consultant with iHeartMedia here in Charleston. Thanks to all of our chamber members with us live and those catching us on the recording. And a big thank you to Mount Pleasant Chamber's own Rebecca, Imholtz for keeping us on track today and each week. From all of us at the Mount Pleasant Chamber, thank you for joining us this week on The Pivot. Make it a great week.